the Gamer's Table. It is Monday, and we are reviewing Survive. Escape from Atlantis. Survive is a fun family game. Well, it can be kind of mean. You know, you're gobbling up your opponent's character, or your little peoples and stuff like that. Uh, sharks and sea serpents and stuff. And I could see maybe some people not taking it too well. I guess it all depends on the people who are playing. An underwater volcano has erupted, and the mythical island of Atlantis is sinking. Every turn, another piece of the island sinks into the sea. Each player is in a race against time to move their Atlantean people to safety of the nearby islands. But the path to safety is dangerous. Sea serpents and sharks attack your people. Whales surface and capsize your boats. Rescue as many people as you can before the volcano tile is revealed and the game ends. The winner is the player that rescued the most points worth of people tokens. <laughs> so this was originally a family game. Apparently it was made for families who don't like each other. They're mean. Well, we played it mean, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Played three games in a row tonight, and I came out last every time. Survive is a nice light strategy game. It's got a fair amount of chance. This is one you could play with your younger kids. It's uh, recommended for 8+. plus. You start out by everybody... By placing the tiles, setting up the island, and you have three types of tiles. You have the tiles that are vegetation, tiles that are sand, and tiles that are stone. And they're actually all different, different heights of cardboard as well. And you put those out randomly, and they all have powers or actions that happen on them. Once that's done, you all take turns putting your little guys out. All your guys have numbers <clears throat> printed on the bottom. That's how much points that guy's worth. From one to six. After you've got him out there, you can't look at him anymore to see which one's got points, so you might want to try and remember where your high point guys are without letting the other guys know where your high point guys are. Yep. And again, you don't have any high point guys. <laughs> the theme goes very well with this. You know, you gotta, you're you trying to escape Atlantis, get to the other islands and be safe, and trying to avoid all the monsters and sea serpents and sharks and everything at the same time. And... Uh, it's, it's great how the mechanic of the island sinks, all the low, lowlands sink first, then the, you know, the middle lands, and then the mountains and stuff. And, and a game turn consists of you moving uh, three spaces. Uh, unless you're in the water, you only move that guy one space at a time. You got three actions. And, yes, three actions. And then, uh, well, first of all, if you have a tile, some of these tiles are play immediately, or you hang on to them for uh, starting your next turn, and you can play them then. Uh, or any turn. Yes, or any turn. And you'd play that first before moving your guys, then you'd move your guys or whatever you want to do there. And then you would flip a tile and either keep it or play it immediately. And then you roll whatever, whichever dice you're playing with and determine the result from there. You'd move a sea serpent, move a whale, or it usually, it's move, usually move the creatures. If you're playing with the dolphins, you use the two blue dice instead, which can be a really dangerous one. Normally the sea serpents can only move one space, ever. Uh, with the blue dice, a sea serpent can move three spaces, and that that's pretty dangerous. Yeah. Because you're far away from the island to begin with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of those games that it can be a little nasty. There's definite some douchebaggery. That's that's our, the word of the day for us here at the Gamers Table is douchebaggery. But that's basically what the game is about. You, you're you trying to get your swimmers off, and at the same time, you're trying to make sure... Your opponent's swimmers get eaten, or your their people get eaten, or their boats get capsized. Or whatever you got to do to make sure you end up with the most points at the end of the game. There's three spaces in a boat. So this means you can get three guys in the boat. Three different colors, or two of your color, or one of one color, one of another. Depends on how you want to do it. If you want to sort of work together, you put two guys in the boat. One of your color, and one of one other color. And then on both of your turns, because neither one of you controls the boat, both of you can move that boat and it gets it to the island quicker. Yeah, personally the majority would control You're also boat. helping the other guy who's in the boat with you get to the island as well. And who wants to help the other guy? Really? No. <laughs> yeah. The game looks good. It's got a lot of hex spaces on it, which and a darker outline in the area that you build the island with your three different types of tiles. When you're taking tiles off, you have to first take sand tiles until they're all gone, or beach tiles, and then you have to take the jungle or forest tiles. When they're finally gone, then you can take the stone tiles. Most of these stone tiles are whirlpools, and one stone tile is the volcano. This immediately ends the game. This is from Dan. Hey guys, first off, great reviews, thank you. 
very much. Have you thought about reviewing Dungeon Quest? I, be I love Betrayal at House on the Hill, and this looks like a fantasy variant, even though it's uh, technically older. Thanks. Keep up the work. Good work. Okay. So, yeah. A lot of people have asked for Dungeon Quest, and is it still available in stores or not? I don't think so. I, that's probably the problem. We <clears throat> can't know. find a copy of it. Because everybody, every time we hear about it again, it sounds like that might be fun. But yeah. that, that actually sounds familiar. I, I, I played it. Who has that? It's possible that somebody at one of the game meetings has it. So we might be able to get access to it and review it. So wrapping up for Survive Escape from Atlantis. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever survive this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, though, for, uh, for whatever that. A family game, if yeah, a mean family game. It's it's you crazy, it, but it, it's fun. It's, it doesn't take too long. How long did it take? We got three games in and what? Maybe a couple hours. hours yeah, a couple hours. So three games in a couple it's hours. A filler. We played all the different options and stuff, so they're all fun. All of the squids and stuff are really crazy and nasty. I'm gonna give this one a seven. I give Survive a seven. I'll uh, just touch on the high quality pieces like these, the, especially the. Uh, the, the mountain tiles or the stone tiles, they're super thick mm, yeah. compared to everything else. And the game looks really nice. And uh, it, it is fun. There's a lot of random, but it's it's a fun random. Randomness. I give Survive, Escape from Atlantis, an 8. Judging by the old um, set of rules I go for getting, does it have a good theme? Yeah, it does have a good theme. And everything about this holds together with the theme of the island th sinking as all the parts are getting taken off and... The guys in the boats and all the different creatures that are off the boats. The theme holds up. Um, not as easy to teach as you would think. For a rule book that's only like six pages of rules, we refer to the rule book a lot. I thought you were well, just trying to remember a specific tile well, or something. Well, the tiles like are that. all just symbols, right? So you, unless, once you're familiar with the symbols, then it becomes yeah. no yeah. problem. But uh, uh, and until then, stuff like, you're looking how, how at the rules. How does this guy move? Can the guy move this? Can they do that? Can they do that? There's yeah. a lot of checking. Yeah, you just got to play it more often. You recognize it. Once we got into the third game, we knew what they all were. Yeah. And, stuff. and and fun factor, it's Easily. definitely there. And you're standing, you're, you look like you're standing on land, but then one of the other guys removes that tile and all from under you, and you, you're okay, you're sitting good in the pool. <laughs> So that's, that's it good, for uh, this episode of the Gamers Table. Tune in next week for another review of another game. Because that's what we do. Bye. The, the Giant Squid Mini expansion that you pick up from Board Game Geek um, adds in these a new ruling and these four little squid... Survive Escape from Atlantis. Escape? Did I just pronounce that like that? Okay. We'll get oh, and welcome to the <laughs> gamers. <day. laughs> Where's your clip for? Where's your clapper? I already did that. Oh. <laughs> Good God. Have you never done the show before? I, you were out there. I know you I didn't see you do that. I gotta say, get him out of here. Sean, come on. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> So the game looks good. It's a fairly big game board with a lot of hex squares on it. Hex squares on it. One giant leap for man.